G'day guys, welcome back to another video with Eno here from Fantasy Take TV. Today we'll be going through my NFL Sports Deck team for week one. Not far away now, only Friday. Bills take on the Rams um, at SoFi Stadium, kicks off and then um, the coveted red zone obviously on a Sunday morning if you're so inclined to get up for that as I try to do early on. It is tough early, it's 3am to start with and then daylight savings kicks in, it's 4 and then I think once it kicks in overseas... As well, it gets to about 5 a.m. later on in the season, and it obviously a bit more manageable. You know, do you stay up? Do you do you go to bed and then get up? So, you know, the first few weeks is tough if you if you want to get into it, but um, nevertheless, the NFL is a, is a wonderful time. It's it feels like it goes quick, and then you know, there's a big off season that comes around quick again. But um, you know, compared to other sports like you know the Premier League or the NBA, they go, seem to go for ages. Um, NFL is, I like it, it's good, it's action-packed, it's short, it's sharp, and then, you know, the Super Bowl just at the end of our summer um, to, to top it off, but we'll, I'll go through my team, I'll talk about a few picks as well here and there, you know, that I'm not going with or thinking of um, as well, but obviously not super set in stone, there is only the one game on Friday and then you can still make changes um, up until Sunday, uh, obviously with the rolling lockout, but uh, this is where I'm look, thinking and, and going at the moment. Quarterback, a lot will be going Josh Allen. Well, they are 42%. You probably can't see it off the screen. Uh, Herbert, 21%. I'll probably just sort it um, by that. But, you know, of the premiums, Mahomes, 16%. Lamar, 15%. I'm going with Herbert as my QB1 um, to start the year. I think Josh Allen's obviously a fine pick. I just don't quite have the money uh, or I use it elsewhere. And I, I think Herbert should continue to improve as he sort of has every year. And, and that's such a high-powered offense. Like the Bills, I think... They're probably the two most high-powered offenses in the league. Um, you could throw the Rams in there as well and maybe a couple of others, but just as far as um, weapons that they have and the quarterback under center, I think they're the two best. So Allen's a fine choice. I think Trey Lance is a pretty obvious one to pick at QB2. Gets the starting gig now at San Fran. Is only, what, 9.7 mil. Can make a bit of cash there. And if you know he does perform, we can maybe hold him for the year like many did uh, Jalen Hurts for most of last season. Um, and if not, hopefully he makes enough money where we can make a switch to another premium at some point. And then to QB3 on the bench is Mar Mariota. Uh, a lot, I know a lot on Kenny Pickett at the moment. He's not going to be starting this season. Um, he may come in at some, some point, or I think he will. It just depends on when that is. So for now, the plan with you know the quarterbacks is start Mariota. He should play as well. I mean, he might get lose his job at some point, but for now he's got his... Um, Make some, make some coin from him, make the switch to Kenny Pickett if the timing, you know, works out um, well enough to, to downgrade and then and then have Kenny as your, you know, another quarterback making money and whether he's your cover or we trade out of him later on if he makes enough, um, you know, we'll see. But that's later down the line. For now, this is the strategy I'm rolling with. Uh, for the running backs, I'll go back to price for now. Derek Henry is the, the highest priced, you know, 17%. JT, the most the most owned of the premiums, um, he's just clearing away my RB1 anyway. I know that the, another guy some might have arguments for, but for me, I think JT, just bulletproof, um, behind a great offensive line, just a great runner. He's just an unbelievable player. So for me, he's, I mean, he's non-negotiable for me anyway, and the, pretty much everyone playing this game sees that. I've actually gone for Austin Eckler as well, so... I, the debate here, and I'll talk about it a bit, is how many running backs to how many receivers you go. And it obviously is dictated by the rookies. There was maybe more running back rookies we thought, you know, a few weeks ago. And now it's sort of shrinking down to maybe only two or three that are, are viable options. And I'll speak about in, that in a second. So I've actually opted for um, a more stronger running back room to where I go three running backs. And I've seen people go four as well, whereas I was actually thinking of only going two a couple of weeks ago. So I've gone Eckler and then I've gone CMC, which I think you just have to have at 13 mil. I know everyone, you know, just <laughs> cursed by him. You pick him in your, your draft legs or you pick him here and he gets injured and has done for the last two years. But before that, look, I don't think most people are quick to forget, but but a few are and, and at the price, he's just way too underpriced. And if you go without, you know, just expecting an injury um, and, he, and he doesn't, he'll absolutely punish you and you'll probably season over. So... Look, if he happens to get injured again, you know, I hope he doesn't because he's uh, an unbelievable player. We can trade out of him and he, he would have um, held most of his value 
And then for the running backs, I mean, I'll just go by ownership again. I think Brees Hall um, is the one to have. ETN for me is probably a bigger lock than Brees Hall just because of um, the work he'll get early. And then Damian Pierce as the third. And, you know, Cam Akers was one we thought might be a starter. But for me, I just don't trust him off that Achilles. Um, there's J.K. Dobbins, who may not even be ready for week one. Kenneth Walker's uh, got a hernia still. James Cook doesn't have the the role yet. And, and look, Saquon Barkley's the other one that people are going. Maybe is their third for you know a bit of cheaper price, which I, I can see. But um, look, I'm just going to leave Saquon alone. I, I, want him, I want him to do well, but I don't want to have him in my team and worry about it. I just want to see him hopefully come back uh, from his injury worries he's had as well. So that's the way I've gone with my uh, running backs. And then for the receivers, that's allowed me to go and look, there is Cooper Cup at 19 mil. I am avoiding that, and I am avoiding Debo Samuel as well. I think with Trey under center, look, they probably will try to find him a lot, but um, I think his efficiency was just through the roof last year. Obviously, I don't think that'll repeat. You know, he still could, still could be absolutely awesome. I just think for now, I trust Devontae Adams more. You know, I know he's, you know, switching away from Rodgers, but I think Carr is a good enough quarterback to support a, a, a number one receiver. He's done it, you know, with, with Waller before, but. Obviously not a wide receiver, but I just think he's going to feed him. They've got chemistry from back in the day in college. Justin Jefferson is my other receiver. And then I think Stefan Diggs is really underpriced at 12 mil. I think he can outperform that. Um, people think this, uh, seem to think he had a down year last year. It just wasn't as good as his one prior, which was off the charts. Um, and, and he's, you know, ownership reflects that 33%. And they can get a bit funky here with the wide receiver. There's a lot of guys like Jamar Chase, I think a lot of people will have, and, and actually they do, 49%. Um, Mike Williams, I've toyed with. I just had to pull him out late to, to fund some other things, but he's you know someone I, I really want to look at. Just Look, he's explosive. He's low-owned, you know, a bit of a pod, as, as we like to call him. And with Herbert as my quarterback, I can sort of attack um, the, the upside there. Um, but I've gone for uh, I've gone for Pittman as my next one, so I've gone a little bit cheaper here. As I said, to pay for Eckler, I sort of had to make uh, some amends somewhere. And look, it still might change. You know, you can literally save eight million or seven million from Eckler to Saquon if you believe, and sort of spread that around your receivers and, and get um, some more expensive ones. But I think Pittman, Matty Ice comes across. I think you know he's always been one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the league. Pittman was dealing with Wentz, overthrowing him and underthrowing him and, and uh, you know, all these uncatchable targets last year. So I think Matty Ice will help that a lot. All he has to do is to stand behind the line and, and um, put it up there and, and just have to get, get in the vicinity of, of Pittman because uh, he will catch it. Um, and then Sutton is my next one I'm looking for, who I think really at six mil is just almost close to a lock. I, I believe in him more than Judy. You know, he's a further year removed from the ACL injury um so for me he's a lock and then i think the other one is i'll go to ownership now as makes it easy to find it gets a bit interesting i think a rob is is also a must at 4.7 but your two bench wide receivers again this killed me last year i don't know why uh, i um avoided jamar chase when you now look at him as the the second most owned one but drake london is the you know the best one out of the draft um but but you know mariota uh, as his quarterback doesn't really scream pick me but the talent may you know come through drew drew at 4.3 just a horrific year last year um goes over to kc has you know mahomes is he quarterback that seems like a good thing but drew drew do we trust him michael thomas the same now has missed like a year and a half of football um don't know what's going upstairs with him but you know again 4.8 mil for someone who was literally the wide receiver one overall two years ago three years ago just seems crazy not to pick so it's it's just really tough but for me to fit in other things, and again, I'm probably going to do myself out here by not, um, you know, putting as much catch as I can here. I've gone for Michael Thomas, who I just think has the pedigree. And look, if it goes wrong, I can go down to a London. I can go down to a Juju. That's my thinking, but I can't go down from a Pickens, who I've picked as my other one. Currently, the wide receiver, two at Pittsburgh. Um, there's a couple of injuries to their other guys. And look, for the most part, it is to, to fill my cash up a bit and maybe that's greedy and and could come back to bite me. As I said, you know, if Juju pops off, if Drake London pops off, I'll have to find cash to get them somewhere and, and I, I won't have it in the bank, which you'll see. So it does really come down to that Eckler if I want to stick with that. Um, otherwise, I can spread cash around more and, and get pickings up to a, you know, Juju or something. But for now, that's what I'm rolling with. 
Tight ends, I think it's really simple. Um, we don't trust many other than Andrews and Kelsey. Uh, I know they're really high priced, but if they are for a reason, they absolutely killed it last year. Kelsey, I know, gets is a year on, but I just think he's going to get fed so hard at KC this year, and I'm not really confident in picking any of the other cheap options. Uh, and then uh, the other one I've gone for is actually Bellinger, who is right now atop of the, the Giants' depth chart and is, is their tight end one. And look, it won't be... An amazing role or targets or target share, but he is still going to be the most targeted tight end there. And um, look, he can make some cash. If you want to go for a, a loop, I think Trey McBride um, might be one early. He may get some targets and work later on. Who knows? Um, or you can just go for a complete nobody if you want a loop or something. Um, but for me, I want a playing one just in case of a one or two week injury for the two big boys. Finish it off with the kickers where I'm going Cade York and then my loophole, which is uh, Berkic, who's I think on IR for pretty much the year. Um, plays late, early, you know, or early in the year. He, his games are later in the round, so you can use him as a loophole pretty easily. Works well with JT and, and uh, Herbert, who I think will be my two, maybe CMC, um, you know, options early. And then once the buyers hit in week five or six, you won't really need him and you'll just have players on buy that you can use. Um, and then in... Defence and special teams, I've opted for, I guess it's a pod, if you want to say defense, defense is a pod, uh, in the Colts uh, and then the Chargers. And part of my reasoning is I looked at, you may not see it on the screen, um, the, the fixture, but they have Houston and Jacksonville week one and two, and this is their division, right? So they're going to play them again later on. Unfortunately, Houston, the second time round is in week 18, um, which still will get me points, but it's just a long way away. You never know what's going to happen. Um, and then that rotates pretty nicely with the Chargers. So week one and two, right, we saw the Colts. Then they get Jacksonville. Then they get Houston. So I'm pretty much going Houston, Jacksonville, Jacksonville, Houston the first month. Cleveland, I'm happy to field the charges against. Denver, you probably don't want to because, you know, Russ is there, good offense now. But then that's week six, Jacksonville for the Colts. Uh, and then from then on, you know, we'll see what happens. Seattle, we can field the charges. Week eight, you can, you know, keep rotating. But for the first six or seven, it looks really good and look – I understand people may not want to do that. This may want to go Chargers and Jacksonville or Ravens and go on the cheap ones, and that's perfectly fine strategy, I think, as well. And then I could really do that and find some um, extra money elsewhere. But for now, I'm doing that. And, and look, if you look at the top defenses, you know they average for anywhere from 15 to 20, and um, the ones that people are picking from last year, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like you know, it might be a fair difference. And obviously, you got to luck it out a bit with the, with the defense. You know, defense touchdowns, interceptions, all that stuff. Look, it is a little bit lucky, but I think the defenses I've picked, the Colts and the Chargers, are good. They're solid. The Chargers in a harder division, but the Colts, I think, across the season with their division, how easy it is, um, I think they'll be a good pick. So, I hit save on my team. That is what it's looking like. Um, so, lining up week one, um, it's a bit of a decision to be made with the, the running backs. Like, ETN, I think, would be the best to field here for now. And then I did read, and I believe that Buffalo are missing uh, Tredavious White, which is their number one corner, and the actual number two corner from last year has left the, the franchise. So they have two new corners, um, you know, to cover Cup and, and A-Rob. So I think A-Rob for now, I field over MT. MT doesn't have a bad mat- matchup either against uh, against the Falcons, so you could go him. Sutton, I think I just field uh, with Russ against Seattle and then go from there. And then other than that, that's that's pretty much it. For VC, uh, we've got it on JT for now against Houston. I think that's almost going close to <laughs> close to be a lock that we take that score. Uh, otherwise, um, Herb plays later on at, at uh, the next window against the Raiders, and, and you sort of always back the QBs to at least have a decent floor. So we'd roll with that. So um, 580K in the bank after this team. Um, places I can use it, not too great pickings. It won't be enough to get him up. Um, but, you know, maybe an Ekladander with Saquon I do. And then 8 mil, I can, you know, go pickings to another top-tier um, wide receiver and then have A-Rob on the bench and just rotate him, Sutton and whatnot, um, week in, week out, which uh, is an option, is an option. But I don't know if I don't know how much I feel about Saquon, um, you know, getting back to close to his... Close to his best, which disappointingly has been a few years now. So um, just too many injuries. So 
that's the team. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you've got. I probably will be making some changes and look a lot of people we're out talking about it in the Discord. Um, so join that and, and there's obviously still a few days to go and you, as I said, can make changes even past Friday until the uh, the main Slater games on Sunday. So um, by now you've probably seen I've got a link to a league in the comments below probably be more posted in the discord in the next uh, few days so come and join us over there uh, thanks for watching as i said and i'll probably do week, uh, weekly recaps on these but uh, stay tuned if you've listened for this long there is uh, a new podcast coming tomorrow with me and a few of my mates if you caught the stream the other day um or last night uh, we did our nfl fantasy draft on sleeper the the league that we're in but we're going to do a podcast um talking about our sports deck and then mostly about betting i mean they wanted to do some betting podcast have been nagging me for ages so um, I've let them organize it um, I will do it on my channel and, and host it but uh, it'll be mostly up to them and just a bit of banter a bit of fun um, you know if there's some tips and, and whatnot for the week so thanks for watching as I said see you in the next one guys cheers yeah.